I'm going to call the meeting to order uh, and formally open the annual town meeting. I have determined that a quorum is present, and I have examined the return of the warrant and find that it's in order. At this point, for those who are comfortable, I'd ask you to rise and uh, recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, we do have a bit of uh, housekeeping, as I mentioned. Um, as some of you may know, the current town clerk position is vacant, uh, and town meeting requires us to have a clerk present at the meeting. So the way the uh, Massachusetts law reads is that we are able to, uh, the select board, I should say, are able to uh, nominate a town clerk. Uh, unfortunately, it does require a ballot vote. Um, so there are two ballots that you'll have. One is green. Uh, that is for Wendy Houle, who is the select board, or who will be the select board's nomination. And if you choose to write in someone different, then you would s submit the pink ballot. So um, at this point, the select board would like to nominate. I'll make a motion to... Um to elect Wendy Huell as the Town of Deerfield clerk. Uh, second. This meeting. Second. Wendy, if you could give us a brief speech. <laughs> uh, all those, uh, if you could submit, uh, just if you can, yeah, uh, Chief will come up this side and grab the ballots from the end of the aisle if that works. Congratulations, Wendy. Uh, we actually are very grateful that she stepped up yes. and can help us this evening, so uh, we're very yes. lucky. Yes, thank you, Wendy. There you go. I like it. Um, at check-in, everybody should have received the town meeting package, um, and I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but in the beginning of the bylaws, uh, that's part of what controls how the meeting is run, so I, I have to make sure that we abide by those as things go forward. We also use a publication called Town Meeting Time, so sometimes things are a bit wonky with procedure, but we do have to follow them, so I'll try to explain if there's anything I need to do based on those. So, um, The handout will show both the warrant uh, and the, the warrant, the articles, and the motion. Just to kind of explain the difference between the articles and the motion quickly, the articles are what put everyone on notice of what's going to be heard this evening. The motions are actually what you'll be voting on. So they might be a little bit different than the articles, a little more precise. Um, but again, it's the motions that we want to be paying attention to. So, um, so in terms of process, somebody will make the motion. It will be seconded. Uh, at that point, the person making the motion will give a brief explanation of what the purpose of the motion is. And then we'll open it up to the floor for questions uh, or comments. If you do have them, if you could just raise your hand. It looks like we are going to use the mics tonight. So if you can actually do more than raise your hand and just come down to the mic in a single file line. Um, and I will uh, call on you to address. When I do call on you, if you can just state your full name and your street address. You don't have to state the number of the street, but just the street address. Um, and with that, let's begin. At this point, I'd ask uh, to have the head table introduce themselves, starting with town council. Lisa Mead, town council. Wendy Hull, temporary town clerk. <laughs> <laughs> Brenda Hill, town accountant. Trevor McDaniel, select board, board of health. Carolyn Ness, select board and board of health. Tim Hilchey, select board, board of health. Dave Sharp, finance committee. John Pereski, Finance Committee. Julie Chalfont, Finance Committee. Mark Brennan, Finance Committee, CIPC Chair. Beth Brown, Finance Committee. Jim Cambius, Finance Committee. Yes. Thank you. Uh, there was a typo in the uh, publication or the warrant, so Mr. McDaniel, do you just want to address that at this point? Sure. Uh, let's see, notice is hereby given that a Scrivener's error occurred in the annual election warrant indicating there were two Deerfield School Committee seats to be elected. There is only one seat for election as noted on the posted specimen ballot. So it's just in the, in the notification we had two listed but there is only one and that's correct on the ballot when you go to vote next Monday. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have two initial motions. The first I move that the reading of all articles be waived and that prior to the reading of a motion under the article, 
The moderator briefly summarized the content of the article to be considered, and further, that unless objection is raised, the reading of detailed motions be waived, where the article as printed can, in the opinion of the moderator, be incorporated by reference in any motion presented. Uh, this just lets uh, myself or someone making a motion kind of summarize things. Uh, again, the handout will show the actual verbiage, but it just kind of shortens the process. Any questions or concerns? All those in favor? Opposed? The motion carries. Uh, I move that the following people be allowed to address the audience during the town meeting. Attorney Lisa Mead, town council. Brenda Hill, town accountant. Casey Warren, town administrator. Darius Modesto, superintendent of schools. Uh, Shelley Pareda, director of business administration, Frontier Union 38. Tina Jeme, principal, Deerfield Elementary School. Richard Martin, superintendent of the Franklin Technical School. And Russell Cowbris, business manager at the Franklin County Technical School. Second. Uh, this just, uh, it, by our town bylaws, uh, non-residents are not allowed to speak or participate in town meeting uh, without a vote or authority from all of you. So this just uh, allows certain people who may or may not speak tonight to have that, that right. So all those in favor? Opposed? That motion carries. Um, for the last few years, we've been using what's called the consent agenda. And what it's meant to do is, again, speed things up a bit uh, and kind of lump together some of the non-controversial articles, we'll call them, uh, into a single single vote. Um, so we'll be doing that for the first two sets of, of votes tonight. So with that, uh, Mr. McDaniel, Article 1. I move the town approve Article 1 on the following matters, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, as set forth in the warrant. Mr. McDaniel? So again, this is, a, this is a, a consent agenda, just kind of hitting the normal things that we hit every, every annual town meeting. Um, it just combines uh, several annual requests into one article to expedite the business of the town. Um, it is, um, you know, pay for, for the elected officials, acknowledgments of gifts. Um, and I would just like to acknowledge uh, the gifts given to the town of Deerfield. Um, Deerfield Academy of $139,712, Eagle Brook School $52,000, Bement School $10,000, Woolman Hill $4,543. They have also given um, over the last several years for the replacement of the elementary school roof, many will remember, and over that time Deerfield Academy has donated 105,000, Eagle Brook 75,000, Historic Deerfield 25,000, Bement School 20,000, along with um, other pledges from, from um, the schools uh, to the town, like uh, Deerfield Academy 30,000 towards the school resource officer, among other things. Any comments? All those in favor? Opposed? That motion carries. Article 2 will be the same thing, and I, I didn't uh, fully explain. If there is anything within the article that you'd like to uh, place a hold on, just speak up and say hold while it's being um, moved, and we'll go back to those items. So, Ms. Shores Ness? I move the tra town transfer from free cash the following items A, B, and C as set forth in the warrant. Second. Ms. Shores Ness? This is, um, again, a consent article, but we as a um, select board and the finance committee did increase the reserve fund this year from 100 to, to 120,000 um, in acknowledgement that um, our budgets are very tight and that anything that out of the ordinary does, reserve, does require reserve fund transfer from the finance committee. Our OPEB liability is the post-employment benefits. We've settled on a small amount, which is not adequate, but at least is something towards our um, liability. And then we have the out-of-district placement to Smith Volk, which is, um, it, it depends on how many students each year, and we're having additional four students this year. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Opposed? That motion carries. Uh, Article 3, Mr. Hilchey. I move the town approve the maximum amounts for the revolving funds established in the Deerfield General Bylaws, Chapter 20, Section 20-3, Departmental Revolving Funds, 
pursuant to General Law Chapter 44, Section 55E and a half, 53E and a half, as set forth in the warrant. Second. Mr. Hilchey. So this just um, establishes the maximum amounts that can be placed in these revolving funds for use by recycling, parks and recreation, and planning for expenditures this coming fiscal year. Any questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Article 4, Mr. McDaniel. I move the town adopt the classification compensation plan in accordance with the Deerfield General Bylaws, Chapter 35, Personnel, Article 3, Classification Compensation Plan for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2023, as set forth in the warrant. Mr. McDaniel. So um, this article sets the classification compensation for, for the bylaw employee positions, which we do ev every year. Um, some contracted employees aren't, aren't included, police officers, highway department, um, which are subject to collective bargaining, uh, town accountant, budget director, town administrator, wastewater treatment um, chief, operator, and police chief are not included on that. But we have made changes to the plan. Um, some, of the, some of the items were moving the outreach coordinator um, from a grade B to a grade C after adding supervisory responsibilities to support the director, and this is for the senior center. Um, a new position of planning economic development coordinator within the select board staff salaries. You'll notice when we get to salaries that that, that section has increased because of this position. Um, um, the budget has, cre uh, has been created to support the new and complex activities such as rehabilitation of the 1888 building, formerly the Senior Center, to be used as Town Hall, rehabilitation of the 1821 building, formerly known as the South Deerfield Congregational Church, for potential use for both senior services and community functions, development of a municipal campus encompassing the town's properties on Conway Street and North Main Street, which include the Tilton Library, the 1821 building, the 1888 buildings, the current municipal offices, and the police department. Uh, duties for this position include grant writing and administration, uh, state, federal, and private sector grants uh, to fund town rehabilitation projects and support the planning and zoning boards. Um, yeah, that'll be it. Any questions or comments? Um, I just note in the handout you'll see the Finance Committee's uh, recommendation on each of these votes that uh, impact financial matters. Uh, so they meet uh, after the first, well, they meet before the first year, but also after the first year, uh, after the Select Board has put together a lot of these articles and deliberate on them. So their, their opinions are important. And if they do have comments during the evening, just raise your hand and we'll include you. But otherwise, you can rely on the recommendation as shown in the handout. So all those in favor of the motion as presented. Opposed? That motion carries. Um, Article 5, Ms. Shores Ness. I move that the town transfer from free cash the amount of $87,296 to fund fiscal year 2023 shortfall for snow and ice removal expenses. Second. Ms. Shores Ness. <clears throat> this article requests uh, funding to cover the unanticipated expenses of snow and ice beyond what we appropriate every year. Um, the shortfall this year is approximately 95000 which will be made up um, the difference between a couple other um, accounts and transfers. And um, it, it's really attributed to the amount of salt, the cost of salt and the amount of salt we're using for, you know, salting the roads when we have, we actually have less snow but more ice that we are dealing with. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Opposed? That motion carries. Article 6, Mr. Hilchey. I move the moderator read amounts recommended to be appropriated under this article as referenced in the guide, and unless objection is made, each item recommended in the report of the Finance Committee shall be tentatively accepted as appropriated for the purpose stated. If an objection is made to any recommendation, such appropriation shall be taken separately and the amount thereof and the manner of taking the same shall be determined by vote of the meeting and tentatively accepted. One vote shall be taken appropriating each amount so, so, so accepted as a single appropriation not to be exceeded. Second. 
Uh, so in the handout, I will be reading off each of the um, line items in the budget. And so as I read them, if there's anything that you'd like to come back to, just uh, loudly state hold, and there won't be any discussion on it at that point. We'll then take all the holds at the end and go through them one by one. Um, before we do that, uh, the Finance Committee has asked to give a brief pres uh, presentation on their review of the budget and their opinion uh, related to it. Thank you. So there is a, um, a written statement from the Finance Committee in your handout there. This is a very quick summary of what's written in that in your handout. Um, so the first statement is probably obvious to everybody in the room, but there was, there was significantly stress on the budget because of inflation. Everything has gone up. So um, the, the goods that are being purchased, but services, supplies, everything has gone up. So with no increase to um, services at all, prices have just gone up right and left. Um, personnel, just to pull that out, um, the, the personnel committee voted a 3% cost of living adjustment of 3% COLA. The um, class comp plan, which we just voted, has a 2.5% increase by step, and almost everybody goes up a step a year. So that's, you know, over 5% right there for personnel, um, and a similar increase to people who are in um, contracted positions, not on the class comp plan. Um, and then in addition to this sort of stress on the budget just from um, inflation, most departments requested an increase in personnel um, or hours and or overtime. Um, and there's a number of factors that we've listed up here that are impacting that and, and causing those requests. So that's what we went into with the um, reviewing the budget. We're ready for the next slide. So what happened with the budget then is that we first look at revenue and we estimate that there'll be a revenue increase of about $700,000 this year. Um, there will be an increase just in the recurring expenses of 815-ish thousand. Um, but making that, so there's 100 and something thousand, 115,000 right there that we're off. Um, compounding that, last year at Fall Town Meeting, we added 103,000 and something to the budget. Um, so there's another 100,000 there. So there's a, essentially a $200,000, $215,000 um, deficit between our expected um, increase in revenues and our, our proposed budget with the increase in expenses. Um, so that was made up using free cash basically. We are not supposed to be spending free cash for um, recurring expenses. Free cash is it, it's what's left over in your checking account at the end of the year, basically. It, it's extra revenues that came in and money that you didn't pay that you expected to pay. Um, so um, where we are right now is that there is no, you'll see there's no Proposition 2.5 override request this year, but what we've done instead is spend pretty much all of our free cash and our expected revenues on um, operations and maintenance. So there are no requests, there are no capital expenses that are being paid for using free cash this year. And you'll see when we get to those capital expenses, what we've done instead is use funds that we had in hand um, from other sources. So we're using, we have an ARPA grant, which is um, funding that was given to us basically for COVID costs. We have, um, we have a capital stabilization fund, and we've used money out of that capital stabilization fund, and there's a couple other reserves. So what we're doing is really spending down our reserves in order to cover the requests that we see in the budget this year. Um, so if you're not reading the underlying statement that I'm making is that we're going to make it this year and next year I would be surprised if we are able to um, cover the budget without asking for a Prop 2.5 override. All right, next slide. Um, the, as I mentioned, the capital expenses, and you see this in your handout as well, are not being paid for using free cash. Instead. Um, there was uh, 
if we start at the sort of the left-hand column and work our way across, the first one is a sales of real estate fund. This is the Oxford Pickle Plant property. It was sold. Um, the loan that we had was paid off, and there was extra funds from that sale. Those are being used for the first two capital items. Um, CPA, Community Preservation Act funds, are being used for the two capital requests that um, fall within the uh, purview of CPA. Um, ARPA, as I mentioned, is essentially money um, uh, given to the town for uh, COVID expenses. Basically, that's being used for a couple of the expenses. The capital stabilization fund is being used to cover the other two, and then some are being pushed off to future costs. Um, the one there, the South County EMS retained earnings, um, that is a fund that is intended to be used for capital purchases. It is being used for cardiac monitors and for part of the ambulance. The remainder of the ambulance is being covered by the, um, the three towns involved. So our piece of it um, will be from capital stabilization, and the other two towns will cover the rest. Next slide. Um, just to look at how it falls out, about three-quarters of our revenues are from property taxes. Um, the remainder comes from um, essentially 8% from the state, about 10% from local receipts. That's things like um, excise tax, meals tax, that kind of thing, um, and 5% from free cash. Next slide. Um, looking at our recurring expenses, the, um, the biggest recurring expense is schools, 62%. Yeah, 62%. Um, and then the, the rest, the other big ones are 8% for general government, 8% for public safety, 8% for public works. I feel like we have a theme going here. Um, and then about 5% for benefits and then other 2 or 3% for the other things we do. Um, there were a couple of significant non-personnel related expenses that you'll see as you go through item by item. Um, the first one and the last one, transfer station and sewer expenses, this was, this was all disposal costs. They went up because just disposal of the stuff that you have to get rid of. Um, legal expense has gone up by, we're estimating 20000 for this year. We have intentionally um, been increasing town building maintenance because there's been a backlog of town building maintenance that has um, not been accomplished over the years. Um, and then Tritown Beach has some vegetation growing in it that there's environmental permitting and um, trimming that has to happen for that. Next slide. And then I mentioned that pretty much everybody wants more time. Um, and, and more people. So if you go through this, this is a list of the increases that were um, that were approved through um, Select Board and Finance Committee. Um, so there's two columns there, cost and budget. The cost is, if we take the first one, the Planning Economic Development Coordinator, um, that position is a $73,519 salary. It is offset by $35,000 that was already in the budget for planning expenses that will not be um, expended because this person will do it. Um, so that's the difference between the first column and the second column. First column is the cost of that. Second column is what you see in the budget, um, including any offsets that are there. Um, so the first position is a full-time planning economic development coordinator. Um, I don't know, you guys can read, so <laughs> I don't need to read the rest of this, I don't think. But um, there are a number of positions that have increased. That cost line does not include benefits, because benefits are, um, they vary depending on the person and what, you know, like whether they take health insurance and what level and everything. So it's very hard to put a quantified number down. So these numbers do not include benefits. Um, the... Um, I think that's it. That's all I had to say. I was also asked to tell you all that, um, and, and you know this, but at, we go through all of these items in the Finance Committee. We discuss them in excruciating detail, and it is often not unanimous. So all of these items were recommended by the Finance Committee. Many of them were by no means unanimous, but it was a majority of the people um, on the committee who voted each one. Yep. Yes, if you just go up to the mic, you state your name, your street address. 
Hi, uh, Lily Dwight, South Mill River Road. Um, I was wondering, what is the em impact of having a lower certification of free cash? Someone on the select board? Yeah. Or Julie? Or <laughs> So, so what free cash is, free cash is money that's available that can be used for um, expenses during the year. Brenda might do a better job of explaining this, our accountant, but I'll give it a stab. Um, so it is used to um, mainly pay for capital expenses. That's the goal. If you have a lower certified free cash amount, that means that you have less money available next year to spend, basically. Thank you. Okay. I have a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Hello. Hi. I'm Kate Lawless, 11 Sugarloaf Street. And I just have a question about um, the property taxes. Does that include business paying property taxes? Yes. yes. And what is the like ratio between like personal property and business property, roughly? I'm just curious. I don't know that off the top of my head. So they they really an pay the same rate. Is that what you're asking? Or? Yeah, the no. rate is the same, but you, you're you're asking how much money is from people yeah. and how much is from businesses. Yeah, just from business commercial, about 83 from personal property. Awesome. Property. Yeah. That was two years ago, but close. It's close to that. Yep. Thank you. I was going to say 20. I, think I saw it somewhere this year. <clears throat> okay. W with that, we're going to start reading the items. Um, Moderator, $400. Select board salaries, 16,000. Select board staff salaries, 349,168. Select board administrator expense, 15,950. Finance committee, 500. Accountant salary, 91,613. Accountant expense, 17,350. Assessor salaries, 11,000. Assessor's administrative assistant, $74,322. Assessor's expense, 18525 Assessor's quintiquennial uh, recertification, 22000 Clerk, treasurer, collector salaries, $157,648. Treasurer, collector expense, 31540 Legal expense, 96000 Personnel board, 750 IT hardware, 5000 PEG access capital expense, 4000 Contracted services, $260,375. Town clerk salary, $101,880. Town clerk expense, $22,850. Conservation commission, $2,000. Open space committee, $250, uh, $250. Planning board, $2,000. Zoning board of appeals, $1,000. Agricultural commission, $100. Energy committee, $1,000. Town office building maintenance, $92,900. Town office expense, $16,500. General insurance, $65,520. Police payroll, $1,083,917. Police department expense, $115,100. Police department cruiser, $55,000. Inspection department payroll, $175,292. Inspection department expense, $4,950. Emergency management, $2,800. Canine control, $21,527. Deerfield Elementary School, $5,265,247. Frontier Regional School, $4,306,795. Frontier Regional Capital, $11,290. Frontier Regional Transportation, $96,311. Franklin, uh, Franklin Technical School Assessment, $471,415. Franklin Technical School Capital, $17,827. General Highway pay Payroll, $588,676. General Highway Expense, $321,900. Winter Snow and Ice Removal, $95,000. Street lighting, $20,000. Transfer station expense, $244,200. Test well monitoring, $41,000. Board of Health payroll, $88,369. Was there a hold on that? I'm sorry. Yep. Thank you. Uh, Board of Health expense, $14,975. Council on aging, $500. 
Senior Center Expense, 75822 Veterans District Assessment, $14,195. Veterans Benefits, $21,000. ADA Coordinator, $250. Tilton Library, $210,068. Summer Swim Program, $6,310. Tri-Town Beach Expense, $41,022. Recreation Department Director Salary, $63,108. Historical Commission, $1,175. Veterans Day Memorial Day expenses, $2,000. Maturing debt, $422,051. Interest on maturing debt, $234,941. Interest on temporary loans, $5,000. FERCOG core assessment, $42,264. Unfunded sick leave and vacation, $10,000. Franklin County Regional Retirement, $640,352. Uh, workers' Compensation, $48,901. Unemployment Insurance, $22,000. Group Insurance for the Town, $338,070. Group Insurance for the School, $652,739. Medicare Insurance, $111,159. Uh, with that, we'll go back to the holds. Uh, so I believe there was a hold on the town clerk's salary. If somebody made a hold and wishes to speak on that, if they could come up to the microphone. Lily Dwight, South Mill River Road. I was just curious because it tripled <laughs> in right. one year. Yep. So I can explain that. Um, Last year, uh, a little over a year ago, we, we had the, the position of town clerk, treasurer, and collector, and it was held by one person. And so in that department, she had two assistants. So if you look up on the treasurer, collector salaries, and inadvertently clerk was still left in there, those three salaries were in that account last year. So... We've now gotten that position split so that we have a town clerk that's going to be separate. So we moved the assistant town clerk into the town clerk salary line item. We also, when we separated those, those positions, were unclear as to what it would take, how many hours it would take for a town clerk to, to manage that position. And it's become clear to us in this year of not having a town clerk and having an interim town clerk, so on and so forth, that that position has become much more complex and is needing more hours than what we had um, allocated to it last year. Mr. White, does that remove your hold, or do you have any other? Uh, so that's one person? No. no. There's two, yes. two there, we had a town clerk and an assistant. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the next hold was the Board of Health Payroll. If someone from the front table wants to speak, if they could just raise their hand and we'll call on you after the question. Kathy Melnick, Mill Village Road. I guess my question is, uh, who does this include? Because I know I've had a surf safe person trying to get a hold of the Board of Health agent for questions, and no one's been available. Very hard to get a hold of, so I want to know who's included in this salary. And it's, it's our Board of Health agent. The, the hours have been reduced, um, but he is here Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I would have to question that because I know this person has called several times to get appointments and has not been able to. Get well, in touch why don't with this you, person? K K Kathy, why don't you have them call me, and I will make sure that we'll sort that out, okay? Thank you. Thanks, Kathy. Ms. Malik, does that remove your hold? Yes. Thank you. <coughs> I believe those were the only two holds. Yeah. So, Mr. Hill. Going all the way down. <laughs> as long as it's not a beer can that comes out of front here, we're okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Hilchey. 
I move that the town appropriate $17,482,659 to fund the accepted amounts voted and to meet this appropriation transfer $62,400 from SKIMS Enterprise Fund, $8,400 from South County Senior Center Fund, $77,600 from Sewer Enterprise Fund, $5,535 from receipts reserved for debt, $4,700 from the Wetlands Protection Fund, $10,000 from the Cemetery RRA Fund, $52,158 from free cash, and raise and appropriate $17,000,000. $261,866. Second. <clears throat> Does anyone have any further comments or questions on the budget? All those in favor of the budget as presented? Opposed? That motion carries. Nope. So Article 7, Ms. Shores Ness. Um, I think we're going to move and consider this after Article 11. Um, I, I will move the Article 7 be moved to be considered after Article 11, Community Preservation Act funding. A second? Second. Uh, th this article uh, fits in better after Article 11, so the board has asked to move it till after that article. So all those in favor of doing that? Opposed? That motion is moved. Uh, article 8, Mr. McDaniel. I move the town appropriate $2,142,731 for fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2023 to fund the Sewer Enterprise Fund as set forth in the warrant. Second. Mr. McDaniel? This budget is funded through use of operational reserves to provide sewer and wastewater services to users. The budget includes reserve for retained earnings required by USDA as part of the loan agreement for the South Deerfield Wastewater Facilities Upgrade Project. 75% um, of the borrowing cost for the upgrades project is included in the budget with the remaining 25% paid through taxation as required through the special legislation that created the sewer and wastewater services circa 1936 and amended in October 2023. The amendment is under review by the legislature. Borrowing costs to be paid in fiscal 23 from the enterprise fund equal $538,251 with the remaining costs to be paid through appropriation in the maturing debt line in the amount of $179,417 for a grand total of $717,668. Any questions or comments? All those in favor of the motion? Opposed? That motion carries. Article 9, Mr. Hilchey. I move the town vote to appropriate the sum of $1,587,242 and to transfer from free cash the sum of $346,898 to fund the South County Emergency Medical Service Enterprise Fund for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2023 and to meet the town of Deerfield's allocated share costs as follows. Second. Mr. Elchie? <clears throat> so um, this is the town of Deerfield's portion of um, the, the uh, cost for running the emergency medical service, and the balance of the, the money uh, is paid for by Waitley and Sunderland. Um, much of the cost of the service is funded by receipts for um, health insurance payments for ambulance-related services, and uh, this is what we uh, pay for an excellent service. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Opposed? That motion carries. Article 10, Ms. Shores Ness. I move the town transfer 125000 from the sale of real estate to fund 80000 for the town for the Deerfield Elementary School front entry repairs and 45000 for the air conditioning phase two project. I move the town transfer 325000 from capital stabilization for the purchase of a Freightliner truck. 
and I move the town transfer 150000 from the SCEMS retained earnings to purchase three cardiac monitor, heart monitors. I move the town transfer $100,000 from the SCEMS retained earnings and $142,343 from the capital stabilization to meet the town's share of allocated costs to purchase a new ambulance. Second. Ms. Shores, that's... Um, this, this is our capital project list. Um, I'm on the Capital Improvement Committee, and we um, were presented with projects, and this is how we're going to fund them. Uh, this year is a little bit complicated because we're short some cash. We usually do this with free cash, and there just isn't enough this year. But we are able to fund almost everything. We moved um, the Ford F 350 and the um, loader to next year with the hopes that we'll be able to have um, funding at that point. Any comments or questions? Uh, yes, Mr. McDaniel. Yeah, if well, you can just come down to the mic. Mr. McDaniel, go ahead. I would just um, like to comment about, you know, moving the projects off it's been it's been very difficult like we've moved the loader a couple of years now and it just gets more and more expensive each year but you're also running into this fact of not having free cash um, we used to fund a lot of our projects with free cash but we're getting to that point as, as julie talked about and carolyn um, that we're going to really have to start looking at next year um, you know we talked about maybe a two and a half override because we really you know we've been our town has been growing and we haven't really been maintaining on the capital items, and we really need to we really need to create a capital stabilization funding to get into these uh, projects because when we have the opportunity to buy them, we're running out of the cash to do them. But each time we go back to do them, they're they're increasing just a huge amount each year. So um, we are looking at maybe um, either. Um, uh, leasing a loader or looking at um, repairing the one we have to make it a little longer but just knowing again five years down the road the cost of that loader compared to today you're trying to weigh all of that stuff so I just want to put a little context on that that's it thank you um, oh, Kathy. Kathy Malnick Mill Village Road my question is on the uh, truck are we trading something in I think a couple years ago I um, asked for any new equipment be traded in. I still see that there's a truck sitting at the dump um, that hasn't been traded in. I don't know how many more, how many trucks do we actually have? How many people do we have to um, run these trucks? Is this, I understand things are expensive, but I also know that we have things in our business that are quite old that we keep going and um, just would like those questions answered. Mr. McDaniel? Yeah, it's true. The, the transfer station is like the, the last, last pot of reserve. So if we get the, um, the freight liner truck this year, everything kind of runs downhill, and the, and the oldest truck from the highway garage would go to the transfer station. That old truck at the transfer station is really used to, to ship stuff to the back or, or for backup whenever they need to to, to lug some material around. The loader is there as well to scoop up all the stuff we dump there each weekend, gets loaded in the truck and trucked out back, and that's actually getting pretty full. So at some point, we need to chip a lot of that as well. But yes, a lot of stuff kind of just leapfrogs down to the last spot, and then it just does go to, to, um, uh, to surplus and, and trade it in. Like the loader, if we purchased it this year, we were going to sell the loader that's at the transfer station, but we just didn't have enough money to do that again this year. So, um, yeah, we, we do unload any surplus we have. And but I do, excuse me, but I do know that I go to the transfer station every week. A lot of times that truck has not moved because I can see that the grass hasn't been knocked down around it. Yep. And I also know the bucket of the payloader is more than capable of hauling that stuff up to the back and yes. that truck has not been used. Yeah, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Yeah, it's not used very often at the transfer station, but again, it's the last one that we have. Oh, sorry. Uh, Mr. Scarborough. He's the man would know. Uh, Mr. Scarborough, uh, Highway Superintendent, hopefully I can uh, answer some of your questions. Um, do we haul every week? 
No. Every time that you see the pile lower than it was, it was hauled by truck. It was not hauled by the loader. If you try and take the loader and bring it from where it is to out back, probably more than half would fall. Um, what we do is we take the oldest truck and bring it up there so that way we're not slopping up um, a newer truck. Um, one way you could get away with that would be to stop taking brush and stop taking leaves, which I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of people in town that would appreciate that. Um, and again, like Trevor says, you know, we're getting very full out there and we're starting to do some chipping. Um, and to be honest with you, we are one of three towns, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, out of 351 in the state of Massachusetts that's actually allowed to have a brush dump. Um, at some point in time, we're going to be done with that. And when we are, um, then we'll have to come up with a different option. What's the yard size of the bucket on the payloader? As three yards. Here? What's the yard size of the truck? Nine. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I go there quite well, often. If, if you'd like, we can, I, I, and I welcome anyone, if you would let me know, I would more than happily take you up there, show you physically how we load the truck, how much is moved, and if we were to go ahead and move it from point A to point B by a loader only. More than happy to anytime you'd like. Just Thank you. Call, just give me a call. Thank you. It, uh, by our town law, bylaws, we're only supposed to speak once. So, uh, Mr. Hilty, do you have anything further to add? I just wanted to say that um, we do um, try to sell surplus uh, equipment whenever possible. Most recently, um, we sold um, an old wood chipper to another town. Um, it was deemed not safe. We sold it as is with the understanding that the other town would upgrade it to their suit their needs when we replace the wood chipper that uh, is currently being used by the DPW. I just wanted to say that, yes, we agree. We should try to sell any used equipment that, uh, and recover money for the town. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Opposed? That motion carries by a two-thirds majority. Article 11. Ms. Dwight. Yeah. Not yet. Okay. There, there we are. All right. Um, <clears throat> I'm sp uh, speaking on behalf of the Community Preservation Committee. I move that the town appropriate $572,000 for the subsidized senior housing feasibility study and land acquisition request. And to meet said appropriation, transfer $43,000 from the Community Preservation Fund 2024 estimated revenues and $529,000 from the Reserve for Community Housing, all in a manner consistent with the proposal submitted by the Ad Hoc Senior Housing Committee and approved by the Community Preservation Committee, subject to approval by the Capital Improvements Planning Committee. Said funds to be expended within three years under the direction of the Select Board and any unused funds to be returned to the Community Preservation Fund as required by statute. Do I do them one at a time or the uh, other one? Do you have any comment on that particular one? Um, I'll put on my chair senior housing <laughs> committee hat for a moment. If someone would like to speak on it, if they can go up to the microphone. Okay. No one is. Finance committee, would you like to be heard? Um, so when we reviewed this article, um, we actually recommend it not at the $572,000 value, but at the $85,860 value. The 85,860 was the amount for the subsidized senior housing feasibility study. The land acquisition would be the remainder of that. Um, the land acquisition request had not gone through the capital CIPC. What's that saying for Capital Improvement Planning Committee um, prior to this? Um, so we recommend that that amount not be approved at this point. So can I speak in response to that as my senior uh, housing? You can. Okay. Uh, Lily Dwight, chair of the senior housing committee. Um, the, the community preservation committee approved the entire request. 
um, the additional monies, 529,000, well, no, less than that, 486,000 for the land acquisition. Um, the opportunity has come up for us to purchase land abutting the municipal campus for senior housing. We, in 2021, the town voted to set aside $500,000 of the Community Preservation Committee money for exactly this purpose. This will not increase our taxes. This is money that we have already set aside specifically for this purpose. We, were, we are trying to get an appraisal and what we have done is identified every step of the way and we will only spend the money as needed. So we're gonna spend a couple thousand dollars to get an appraisal and if the town can't afford it, then we're done and we don't use the money. Um, and, and then we get wetlands delineation and if that's a problem, then we stop there. So the reason we are seeking this approval right now is to be able to move and be agile because the problem is the Community Preservation Committee votes once a year and we could lose the opportunity. And so that's why we are seeking the full $572,000, which will have zero impact on our taxes and give us the opportunity to actually get moving. <clears throat> well, was the Capital Improvement Committee just not, it just didn't work out that they were able to meet on it, or where was no, that? No, it was a misunderstanding. We did not understand that. We thought we just had to get CPC, Community Preservation Committee approval. We did not understand that we needed to then go to the CIPC as well. We did meet with them last week and we discussed the whole thing um, and they don't seem allergic to the concept but they're willing, but we need to go back to them if, if this actually becomes a reality, which and, we would do. And your motion this evening, which is a little different than the one we had, does yes. call for uh, that, that being subject to that. Yes, Th exactly. Thank you. It looks like there's someone behind you who might have a comment or question. Hi, Jennifer Remillard, Conway Street. Um, in addition to being a resident, I'm also the director of the South County Senior Center. And working with seniors recently who have been experiencing homelessness, there is currently a five to seven year wait list for housing of any kind in the state of Massachusetts. It doesn't matter what town or city that you reside in. Um, by delaying the approval of this, you're setting back probably several years in order to uh, move forward with senior housing. This has been an issue that seniors have been looking for for more than 20 years in this community. And by delaying it to another CIPC meeting time um, and to next annual town meeting, you're gonna set this back probably five years. On average, it takes from start to just uh, shovels in the ground almost five years to get started. If you look at Sunderland Sanderson Place, it took them almost 15 years to get going. So by voting to support this, you're voting to give um, people affordable housing within the town. And by affordable, I don't mean Section 8 totally. I mean you're giving people who want to stay here who are on fixed incomes the opportunity to be able to stay in this community that they love. There are people who are moving out of different communities, going to um, less expensive, which if you look at the housing market, there is no less expensive anymore. You get a condo in Northampton for 524 square feet at 199.9. Um, that problem is only going to increase. So by supporting this particular article, you're going to give people the opportunity to stay in Deerfield and not move away. Thanks. Thank you. Um, town Council just wanted to be heard for a moment. Did you want to comment on that? Sure. I, I just want to make it clear that there's not an authorization to actually purchase land here. That would have to come in the fall. So this is just the funding that has been explained. Any other comments or questions? All those in favor? Opposed? That motion carries. Mr. White. 
I move that the town appropriate $48,693.38 from the Community Preservation Fund 2024 estimated revenues for the town's share of the Frontier Regional Tennis Courts construction, Reconstruction Project. Request all in a manner consistent with the proposal submitted by the FRS Capital Committee and the Select Board and approved by the Community Preservation Committee, said funds to be expended within three years under the direction of the Select Board and any unused funds to be returned to the Community Preservation Fund as required by statute. Second. Second. Mr. White, do you have any comments on that or anyone want to speak on it? If, yeah, I was going to say Trevor, maybe. Trevor. Yeah, Ms. McDaniel. I just, I, first I wanted to thank the Community Preservation uh, Committee for, for entertaining this a little bit late. <laughs> and uh, I, I can't thank them enough for just going outside the bounds of normal, um, normal um, time of taking a look at this. We, there was just miscommunication between um, two different departments on who needed to put in the request. And I really appreciate you guys taking you know, taking this up a couple couple weeks late um, to approve this. It is it is a really valuable um, exercise. You know, a spot for people in Deerfield and and all, all the communities around that use it. Um, it's being used a lot by the pickleball people when tennis is not in uh, in session. And I, uh, we we did use CPA money. I think maybe. 10 or 15 years ago to try to get 14 14 yeah. years ago to try and get five more years out of it so we've gotten the five more years out of it but it is in really bad shape they, they can't really hold tournaments there because you know you can sprain an ankle on a, on a crack out there it's pretty pretty bad shape so this is to kind of redo all of that fully support it anyone have any comments or questions all those in favor Opposed? That motion carries. Dwight. I move that the town appropriate $700 from the Community Preservation Fund 2024 estimated revenues for the preservation of 45 account books kept by Deerfield residents over a period of nearly 300 years, all in a manner consistent with the proposal submitted by the Pocumtic Valley Memorial Association and approved by the Community Preservation Committee said funds to be expended within three years under the direction of the select board and any unused funds to be returned to the community preservation fund as required by statute. Second. This is a continuation of something we all voted for last year as well, I think. All those in favor? Opposed? That motion carries. Mr. White. Okay. <clears throat> I move that the town transfer $42,300 of the Community Preservation Fund 2024 estimated revenues to the Reserve for Historic Resources. General Law Chapter 44B requires that a minimum of 10% of estimated re revenues be set aside for historic resources. Second. Second. So the, we're required by law to distribute a certain percentage to each general area of the um, community preservation reserve funds. And this is the next, these three that I'm going to read out loud are basically just the annual distribution. So this one and the next couple are just what's required as, as a minimum to fund them, correct? Yes. All those in favor? Opposed? That motion carries. Ms. Dwight. I move that the town appropriate $15,000 from the Community Preservation Fund 2024 estimated revenues for Community Preservation Committee administrative expenses. All those in favor? Opposed? That motion carries. I'm sorry? Can we have some discussion on that? Yes. Oh. Well, um, hold off on the vote. I apologize. Sorry. Yes. I'm just wondering what the administrative expenses consist of. Mr. McDaniel? Well, the, um, this, this is money set aside in case they ever really have to do any bookkeeping or anything. The, the money always just rolls right back into the account, never really ever gets spent. But it's set aside just in case, you know, legal or any, any other work. There are dues. There are dues, dues and di different items to get paid out of it, but the majority of it rolls just back every right year. Back. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Opposed? That motion carries. Mr. White. Okay. I move that the town transfer $280,306,062, the balance of the Community Preservation Fund 2024 estimated revenues to the Community Preservation Budgeted Reserve. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Opposed?
Opposed? That motion carries. I think the balances, sometimes there's a question as to the balance of the accounts. Uh, if you can go back one, they're shown in the handout, but those are the current uh, balances in the accounts. Um, so this was where we would go back to Article 7. Article 7 had discussed spending the money on the tennis courts, uh, but now that uh, you have heard what the funding source will be, we would take up Article 7. So Ms. Shores Ness? Um, I move that uh, this article, what, if this article is, okay. Yeah, the, the revised, okay. Yeah. I move that the town approve the sum of $48,693.38, which is the amount equal to the town share of the total project cost of $100,000 to replace the tennis courts for the Frontier Regional School District under the regional school agreement as much as such amount is approved in Article 11 of this warrant for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2023. Second. This Are there just, any comments, Ms. Shores? That's this article is was requested by Frontier Regional, and this just provides the source of the funding for um, the tennis courts. I just know that uh, 14 years ago, Marty Barrett fought very hard to uh, keep those courts going, and uh, we've recently lost her, and uh, I know it, it would make her happy that the, the town is taking this up. So with that, all those in favor? Opposed? And that motion carries. <laughs> Article 12. <clears throat> Mr. Hilchey. I move that the town amend the town meeting vote of April 29, 2019, Article 16, by deleting the words, any appropriation shall be contingent upon a permanent deed restriction in compliance with the Massachusetts Historical Commission recommendations on said property for present and future owners being recorded at the Massachusetts Registry of Deeds and replacing them with, quote, any appropriation shall be contingent upon a historical preservation deed restriction on said property for present and future owners being recorded at the Franklin County, Massachusetts Registry of Deeds, and which may be done in two steps, and when finalized will be perpetual. The re release of funds may be made following the initial recording of the restriction. Second. Mr. Elchie, if you could just briefly explain. So um, three, years ago, three years or more ago, um, the town voters approved uh, a grant of 40 some odd thousand dollars to re re refurbish the exterior of the Indian House Museum in uh, Old Deerfield. And as a part of that, we wanted to make sure that since these monies were going to a nonprofit, that in perpetuity, the, um, the building itself would remain as a museum and a historical um, asset for the town. So um, the Massachusetts Historical Commission, as many governmental bodies, um, suffered during COVID and have a big backlog of things that they need to accomplish. And in order to allow um, Historic Deerfield to uh, receive its funds after doing the work three years ago, we've decided to uh, recommend that we record this deed restriction and then let Massachusetts Historical Commission catch up with things. Any questions or comments? Yes. Let's take the mic. Lily Dwight, South Mill River Road. Um, being on the CPC, I know that we are required to require this protection before releasing the funds. So with this rewording, is it protected? So it's saying, okay, it's gonna be two steps. You record it at Franklin County, Massachusetts Registry of Deeds, and then it gets finalized. Are we protected from the moment that first step is completed? Because that is our obligation as the Community Preservation Committee. Um, town Council had been consulted on that, and I believe they can address the question. Um, so to your, the first point you made, actually the CPC requires a deed restriction where you use money to purchase land. It's been a good practice to also require a deed restriction where you use it for historic preservation. Um, this Mass Historic 
DHCD for affordable housing, as well as um, DOEA related to um, conservation restrictions, have approved a two-step process in order to allow things to move along. So you, in fact, record a deed restriction that is almost identical to the historic preservation restriction, which, um, which assumes and says in it that there will be a historic preservation restriction signed by Mass Historic following it. So the minute that restriction gets filed, it has the same protection except for the perpetual nature of it, which is required to be signed by the Secretary of um, EOEA. So once that gets filed, it presumes another one and calls for another one to be recorded, and then it can be recorded and it will be dated back to the original restriction. You're welcome. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Opposed? That motion carries. Uh, Article 13, Mr. McDaniel. I move the town vote to approve establishment of a capital stabilization fund for the Frontier Regional School District. Second. Mr. McDaniel? So, you know, uh, several years back we had we had established um, a capital uh, committee uh, comprised of school committee members and select board members from all the towns. And we've been meeting, um, you know, quite regularly to, to look at the capital projects of the town. And we, we had hired on early on uh, Joe Markirian to, to work on setting up a capital stabilization plan and coming up with a capital um, schedule of projects that need to need to be done and uh, each year we kind of we really need to set up a capital stabilization fund that would be overseen by the school committee and uh, so that we so that the school has a, a spot to fund it um, and the towns could then if, if we chose to fund a project could fund into the capital stabilization fund a lot like we do in a regular um, capital stabilization work. It's just a, um, it's the right way to do business and, and generally we've been coming to the to the towns to ask for money on specific projects here and there. This would set up uh, a clear capital stabilization fund for the school to, to continue working on their on their capital projects. So it's long overdue. We thought we'd put it on the warrant to get it done. Any comments or questions? There's a reference to this being a two-thirds vote that's not required. So all those in favor? Opposed? That motion carries. Article 14, uh, Ms. Shores-Ness. I move the down accept the fourth paragraph of the Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40, Section 5B, and create an opioid settlement stabilization fund Stabilization fund to be established under Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40, Section 5B, effective for the fiscal year 2024, beginning on July 1st, 2023, for the purposes of using opioid settlement money received by the town for the opioid <laughs> use disorder, OUB, o OUD, treatment, support programs for the people with OUD in treatment and recovery, connects to the care for people with or at risk of developing OUD, harm reduction efforts to prevent overdose deaths or other opioid related harms, support of diversion and deflection programs and strategies for com criminal justice involved persons with OUD, support of pregnant or Parenting women and their families, including babies with neonatal um, abstinence syndrome, and to prevent misuse of opioids and implement prevention education, and dedicate without further appropriation all the particular fees, charges, or receipts established under Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40, Section 5B, to be effective for the fiscal year beginning on July 1st, 2023. Second. Ms. Shores Ness. Um, we have received to date about $32,000 in settlement money. It's very restrictive as you can see the requirement. Um, the couple meetings that I have um, attended, there was quite a lot of pushback from um, local boards of health and people that would be, or select boards um, that would control this funding. And um, so the legislature is, is 
fiddling around with the requirements for this money. And so what we have decided to do is establish the stabilization fund because the money has to go in there. It will be of restricted use. We just are not clear on what we are supposed to do with it or what we really can do with it. Um, and so the idea is to establish the money, uh, the account, so we can put the money in as we collect it, let it accumulate for a couple years while we're trying to figure out what we're going to do with it, um, what would be the most effective, and, um, and, and work from there. So that's why we're trying to do this. Because it, 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 it comes into our general fund, but you, you can't use it for really anything else at the moment. Any Comments or questions? Um, Finance Committee? Yeah, I do have a question. The, um, the motion that is made here is different than the motion that Finance Committee recommended. Um, the dedicate without further appropriation all the particular fees is additional, I, I believe, to what we talked about at Finance Committee. Um, this is the recommended one that uh, was handed out to us from the state. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Attorney Mead. Um, the the state has prescribed actually these motions, and DOR has provided the language uh, to all the communities that are setting up uh, the stabilization funds and acceptance. I don't necessarily have a problem with it. It's just different than the language that we um, read and approved. So, so Attorney Mead, if, if this money was spent, uh, would it go back before any of the committees, or would that dedicate without further appropriation give authority right there to spend it? No, it's dedicated, and then if it's going to come out of the stabilization fund, it would have to come back to town meeting. We would figure out how we want to spend it, but... At this point, we don't really have a clear idea of what would be effective. It, I, yes, Mr. McDaniel. It, I, I believe it, it's over a 10, 10 to 12-year uh, thing. There, there will be other settlements. This money is from one entity so far. There will be other entities, I think, that will eventually settle, and so other money will come in. And generally, we just really wanted to capture this money aside from the general fund. and let it collect until the, till the legislature really figures out what we can use it for. We really want to make a big impact on, you know, trying to help those, you know, afflicted by this uh, after all these years. So really it's just to capture the money right now and we'll come back. We do need three quarters, two thirds of you to, um, to approve any spending later on. So that won't be for a while. Finance, any further comment? Sure. Um, very quickly. So the discussion that we had at Finance Committee, there were originally two, two articles. The first article established the stabilization fund. The second article funded the stabilization fund. The discussion at the point that we had it was that they were expecting further legislation and there may be other vehicles that could be used besides the stabilization fund vehicle. Um, I, if this is what they want to do, I'm fine with it, and I think the rest of the Finance Committee is as well. It's just that th there was understanding that it would not be funded at this point, that we would vote it, the funding part of it in the fall I think, once yep. we had a clear That's understanding correct. of the possible venues. There may be another vehicle that made more sense for our town. That's correct. Yep. Any other comments or questions? All those in favor? Opposed? That motion carries. Article 15, Ms. Shores-Ness. Um, I move that the town pass over this article. There's a second. Second. Uh, all those in favor of not taking any action on this evening, passing it over. Opposed? That article is passed over. Article 16. Okay, so um, I move that the town vote to amend Deerfield Bylaw, Chapter 48, Section 48. Mr. I think. I, I think there was a decision to pass it over before it gets out there. Oh, there is, so I was wondering... Uh, we're going to discuss. I'll oh, we can, we can discuss? Not, okay, not I right now, but just if you can make the motion to pass over. To pass over after, yeah. So I uh, move that the, um, please, the, the, uh, so the, the idea was to, to bring this out and discuss it. The select board prefers to move this article for discussion, but will likely motion to pass over this article. 
Is there a second? So really, the, the idea is to, this one and the following article, if it's still on here, is to really talk about town meeting and when we, when we hold town meeting. Um, Mr. McDaniel, I, just uh, in terms of process, because it's being passed over, we can't discuss me. it. So no, we're okay. We're, we're just going to vote on it, and I'll take a moment. And, um, so Thank this you. article and the next article, just um, we're going to discuss it at the end of the meeting. So when we get to the end, Fine. don't get excited that you're going to leave, because there will be uh, <laughs> Please stay. a brief discussion. If you're watching the clock, I promise you'll be out by 8.35. <laughs> um, um, but, but this Thank article you. and the other article, uh, we're just going to pass over for now, but if you can stick around for just a, a brief couple of moments, we just want to talk about whether to do town meeting on a different day uh, and whether to do it a little later in the year. But um, for yeah. right now, we don't want to take a binding vote on that, is my understanding. So Correct. the motion is to pass over this article. All those in favor? That article is passed over. Article 17, Ms. Shores Ness. Do this. Um, the same thing. The select board prefers to move this article for discussion and we'll make a Passover request. All uh, second. All those in favor? Opposed? That motion, the last, carries. Article 18 um, is also being taken off. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Yep. Someone, I move that the town meeting pass over this article. Thank you, Mr. Ilchi. All those in favor? Opposed? We'll get you out. There you go. Uh, article 19, Ms. Wolfcool. Chair of the Planning Board, I move that the town amend the town the Deerfield zoning bylaws chapter 179 by deleting section 2244 in its entirety, adding a new section 3900, amend section 2230 use regulation schedule, and amend section 3100 townwide parking and loading requirements as required in the warrant. Second. Um, yes. Uh, Ms. Wolfgold, if you would like to explain the motion for a moment. Yes, I can explain the motion, but also we have um, our member of the planning board. Kathy if you could explain the motion first, then we'll call oh, on them when time's appropriate. The motion. Yes, the um, uh, planning board is proposing that we establish accessory apartment uh, bylaws that are consistent with our town and our region and um okay uh, is the planning board anyone present that has an opinion uh, that's required yes a recommendation so i just want to make some major points about the bylaws. you could just state your name and your oh, street address Kathy sylvester Thank planning you. board um so this is to replace a bylaw we already have in place, but it's outdated, and it's on accessory apartments, uh, accessory dwelling units, otherwise known as ADUs. And hopefully it's an improved um, bylaw to protect the town while improving the process for people that might want an ADU or accessory apartment. So the purpose is to provide homeowners with the means of obtaining additional income, support, companionship, to allow them to be able to stay into their homes and to have multi-generational living, if that's what they would like. Um, it increases our housing inventory, which we desperately need, uh, while keeping the appearance of our neighborhoods. So what we did as a planning board is we formed a subcommittee and we got input from a member of the finance committee, the um, board of health select board, uh, the zoning board of appeals. We had a town resident as well on our committee, um, the building inspector, Mr. Walden, and also our consultant, Mr. Curtis. And we just looked over the bylaw to make sure there was, you know, no inconsistencies or any concerns on behalf of the other boards. Um, so we, to point out a little bit about this bylaw, it says an owner must live in one of the units. Um, only one unit can be rented. The accessory apartment cannot be more than 900 square feet cannot have more than two bedrooms. And we're trying to uh, 
keep the appearance of the building um, as much as we can as a one family, so to preserve the the ambiance of the neighborhood. Um, I would like to ask Mr. Curtis, our consultant, to also make a few points, please. I just would like to be clear. Have the, the planning board, have they made a recommendation on this bylaw? It's just required. Yes, council. yes, I'm yes. sorry. Then. Unanimous and recommendation. What is that recommendation? It's unanimous to uh, adopt the Thank new you. bylaw. I appreciate it. And it replaces the one that we currently have that's outdated. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Curtis. Thank you. Just a couple of additional points. Um, the development of the bylaw was based on experiences and bylaws from neighboring communities surrounding our town. Um, Montague, Greenfield, and Conway, for example, all have successful ADU bylaws. Some of them have been, been in place for 20 years or more, and really relatively small numbers of these have been approved um, on the order of six or seven per community um, over the course of that time. <laughs> So with really very little impact on, on the community. Um, the state legislature felt strongly enough about accessory apartments that they specifically amended the State Zoning Act to promote and allow accessory apartments, and this bylaw is um, following the state legislature's standards. So we have a, we have a shortage of, of housing and housing choices in, in the state, and accessory apartments are an important mechanism really um, to provide housing opportunities for working people and elders to uh, stay in their own homes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, is there anyone from the table that has a comment? Someone had their hand up earlier. Uh, just wanted to add some discussion as a resident. Sure. So uh, Mark Brennan, 66 points in road. Um, I have uh, an issue with um, section 3960, or chapter 3960, termination of accessory apartment use. Um, uh, my concern is with the very last portion where it says that the accessory apartment shall be permanently closed until the building, uh, unless the building commissioner provides a waiver. My issue with this is if we're adding square footage to a dwelling uh, and someone needs to get out during an emergency or there's a fire and an ambulance needs to get in, uh, this is going to be an issue. So I would like to make a motion to strike section 3960 subsection 2, 3. So that motion will have to be in writing. So if you want to start to write that. Are you written? Uh, is there a second to the yep. amendment just for the purpose of discussion? Um, so Mr. Brennan, you just spoke on that. I don't know if you'd like to add anything further. Uh, no, thank you. Does anyone have any questions or comments specifically um, as to Mr. Brennan's uh, proposed amendment? Yes, we could just come to the mic. Not much to it. So um, I, I don't understand. This is the duty of the owner upon termination, correct, to which you were referring? And the section is that the kitchen facilities shall be removed? No. Um, uh, that's the next section, section three, dot, dot, Oh, dot. I thought you said section two. Okay. Just to allow, uh, allow access. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you. Sir? Uh, John Altman, North Hillside Road. Um, if you could just explain, uh, I think I get it, but what's the details of the concern about emergency access for this uh, uh, new dwelling? Um, may I comment, Mr. Moderator? Yes, thank you. Uh, the issue that I have is, you know, many times when people are building an accessory apartment, they're going to add square footage. So if a building was added onto and there was a door or something uh, near a far end of that dwelling and someone had, you know, there was a fire in the area, someone had a trip and fall, et cetera, if that uh, entrance was permanently closed, uh, people wouldn't be able to get a stretcher in there necessarily very easily. So my concern is just simply a, of that of safety. Okay. Thank you. Does anyone else have any comment or question on the amendment? Um, so what would happen now is you'd be voting on the amendment, so not on the underlying uh, bylaw. Uh, you'd be voting on whether to include this amendment into the proposed bylaw. 
So all those in favor of the amendment as presented. All those opposed. So that amendment carries. Uh, so now we would go back to the underlying uh, bylaw. And are there any comments or questions on the underlying bylaw? Mr. Scarborough. Uh, Kevin Scarborough, 11 West Street. Um, the question I have is, is, is we're going to be adding bedrooms. We add a bedroom. We do. Um, what I'm really looking at is we need to make sure that we have something in here for sewer. Mm -hmm. We're adding more to it. It'd be the same thing as a two house uh, building permit, which would be basically looking at, um, I can't remember the numbers off the top of my head. But long story short is, I think we need to make sure that to protect the district or, or, or the users, if they're part of it, then they need to be, um, there needs to be a fee associated with. Am I making sense? Trevor? Yes, Mr. McDaniel. Yes, the, great point. That'll, that'll all be in the sewer regulations. Okay, the, I just want to make sure that the bylaw was not going to... Yep, not in the bylaw, but in regulations. Yep. Uh, could I just add? Yes, Mr. Hurtsness. Um I just want to add that um, the Board of Health would make sure the septic system is in compliance with the amount of bedrooms as well. <clears throat> That'd be part of the permit. Uh, Ms. Dwight. Ms. Dwight. Okay. Um, uh, Lily Dwight, Chair of Senior Housing Committee. Um, I would just like to say that the Senior Housing Committee is working very hard to establish somewhere between 33 and 45 um, units for older adults. We know we have over 86 people who want it now. So rather than build giant, massive zoos for those of us with gray hair, this is a great way to keep us, us all integrated as a community, a multi-generational community, both in um, the ability to bring our parents to come live with us or for us to um, dragoon our children into coming back. <laughs> Thank you. Sir. James Perrot, 74 North Main Street. Um, there's no provision in here as to how many people can be in that unit. And having been a resident of Amherst at one point, uh, one bedroom can take at least four students. <laughs> thank you, sir. Anyone wish to comment or? Thank you. Yes, Mr. Upton. Jeff Upton, 3 Hillcrest Avenue. Uh, I understand the intent of this proposal. I do have some concerns, though, and that is with the unattached accessory dwelling. That unattached accessory dwelling, you can call it what you want, but I've been building for over 55 years, and what it comes down to is that is a house. That is a small house, 900 square feet, Plus, in addition, could be unlimited size garage. My concern is, is that small house can be plunked down 10 feet within your property line. And if that happens, I will guarantee you that that will affect the valuation of your property in a negative way. It won't be a positive, it won't enhance your property value, and I just want people to understand what they're voting on. This could come back to haunt us as far as these uh, unattached dwellings, uh, as what was just referred to with Amherst and the uh, rental situations. And I understand there's a need for seniors, I understand there's a need for family. That's not the issue. The issue is, is that you could end up with a small house in limited, unlimited size garage, 10 feet from your property line, and that will have a negative impact on your property value. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Hi. Oh. No, go ahead. No, sorry. 
sorry, Jennifer Remillard, Conway Street. Um, I would prefer to have a small 900 square foot house 10 feet from my property line than to have homeless individuals residing in our community. And at the rate we're going with the market stability for rental properties um, with newer companies coming in and raising rents on seniors um, from $875 a month, doubling that by doing renovations, people are having nowhere to go. The Senior Center has worked with at least three individuals in our community who are homeless in the past uh, six months. So um, no. I would just like people to think about that. We don't have anywhere to put the booming population um, in, our, in our town alone. I think more than 40% of people who reside here are over the age of 60. So please keep that in mind. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Emily Gaylord, Grave Street. Am I allowed to ask for a show of hands? Not really. <laughs> okay, then um, smile boldly at me if you have elementary school aged children at home. I'm guessing not many of you. Um, I have three great loves of my life, my husband, my daughter, and my house on Grave Street, um, but I do not have childcare. And right now my husband, he's a great partner, he's at home with our little girl, uh, but by allowing this, you're allowing families like mine to have childcare. You're allowing families like mine to participate in this town. This is not just a senior housing issue, though I love them. It's also bringing seniors like my mother-in-law, who I'm begging to come and give me some GD babysitting. So um, please consider that as well. And regarding housing um, and the um, valuation of properties, it is actually indicated that ADUs do increase your property value as well. So, Thank you. Yes? Uh, Tim Fannin, Sugarloaf Street. Um, I understand, well, from what I hear, the discussion here, it sounds like this is for people to bring in family members into it, but from what I read, you could build an accessory apartment and rent it to anyone? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, in other words, this could be a way to get more apartments into the into South Deerfield. True. Like Amherst, maybe. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yes. Hi, Kate Lawless, 11 Sugarloaf. Um, I'm just wanting to encourage people to vote for this. Um, I think increasing density of housing is a good thing, and I don't want us building houses on farmland or in the woods. I think we need to think about how we're using our land, and I think this is a great proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes, Bill Collins. I live on Greylock Lane. I'm a new resident here. I definitely support this, and uh, in the city that we moved here from, they're doing the same thing. I don't see, I think it's a, an advantage to, to young families. I'm not a young family. I'm 71 years old, but for young families trying to make it today, uh, I think it's good that they have the option of being able to build an ADU uh, attached or, or, or detached to bring an in income because as everybody knows, wages are not going up fast enough to meet the cost that we've been talking about throughout this meeting. People need the income, whether they bring in their, uh, charge it, for, you know, do it for free for their for in-law or whatever. Uh, I just, I think this is a, a positive thing. Uh, I have been coming here for 30 years because my mother-in-law lived here for 19 years before she passed in 2007. And I've noticed all the the sprawling housing that was built in the 80s here, which you know I think was a, a sad thing to see. This will help prevent more of that in the future. So I'm definitely going to support this this measure. Thank you. Yes. Jim Camby, a Greenfield Road. I'm just speaking as a citizen, but I have a question, which is, don't we all? Uh, a number of people have brought up the question of like packing people in, students or whatever. We have fire regulations about number of occupants, right? Okay, so that would be against the law, right? Okay. <laughs> Mr. McDaniel, do you? No, I, okay, you're nodding. Yep. yep. Nope. yep. Good to go. Any other comments or questions? All those in favor of the motion as amended? Opposed? That motion carries by a two thirds majority. Mr. McDaniel or Ms. Shores Nass or Mr. Hilty, did you want to comment briefly yes. on the articles we passed over regarding town meeting? Yes, please don't leave yet. 
Um, so we had, we had uh, put these articles on the warrant. We thought maybe we would vote for them, but after talking with the moderator and others, we thought it was important to bring it to you and have a discussion here a little bit, and then maybe bring it back in the in the fall if people are interested in. You know, each year it gets harder and harder to do the budgets um, and get them done by the 20 um, by the end of April because even with a change of governor, you get the budgets later from the state. It's hard to and it's hard to get everybody's budget together for the schools um, so early. So moving moving it out um, to the end of May or you know beginning of June or something like that, we thought would be good for just town business. But we also really wanted to discuss what would get more people here is a monday night better than a saturday morning or is a uh, you know we think about people with child care um we we think about elderly that don't want to drive after it gets dark we just we're trying to kind of find the best time that we can get people you know such as yourselves and more to fill this room to to vote on these really important budgets as they go forward and so that that was one article and we wanted to hear just a few people to say a, a few things about that we also thought about um setting a a, a fall special town meeting we usually we usually have one on Saturday. We usually have one in the fall. We're thinking about maybe having them, setting them again on Saturday, or or hear from you what days work best. But would it be better to plan around a fall meeting? That's after free cash usually gets certified in the fall. We come back and we say, well, we have a little bit extra cash. Should we buy this truck? Should we do these other things? And we ask for your support on that stuff. So we wondered. One, would, would, you, would you want to move town meeting a little later, and would it be a Saturday or some other time, and would you want to set a, um, a fall town meeting? We can bypass a fall town meeting if we don't have one. Right now we can call one anytime we want to. We just didn't know for planning services would that be better. So we'd just love to hear from some of you. What do you think about the time of town meeting and days? Anybody want to? Any comments? Yeah. Great. Thank you. In my experience with meetings, there's definitely no, your oh name, sorry, Lori name. Conlon, 5 Hillcrest Avenue. Um, there's really no time that's good for everybody. Let's just right. have the context of that for this discussion. But also, um, as someone who's been canvassing for years and years, I have found that um, most people are, tend to be home on Sundays. In other words, we reach more people at their doors on Sunday sort of afternoons and evenings than any other time that we try to canvas. So my feeling is that while people may kind of uh, squawk at the idea of a Sunday meeting, if you can manage to think about it for you know one, maybe two days out of the entire year, that's that sacred Sunday. Um, I think more people would be able to attend and then it just becomes more a matter of will. Um, Saturdays, you know, a lot of families are busy, people are out of town, there's all kinds of stuff during the week craziness, it is hard um, for everybody's schedule. But in my experience, Sunday is when the most people kind of do sort of settle in. And if they could get themselves out for that short amount of time, that's when um, most people seem to be available if they really want to show up, which I hope they do. Thank you. Okay. Is that Lee on Sunday? Yes. My name's John Pachurik. I live at 50 Sugarloaf Street. I was a former selectman. We studied this issue several years ago. First of all, on your question of whether you want to move it from the fourth Monday in April to May, I have no problems with that. That makes sense. On the issue of moving it to another day like Saturday, Saturday would screw up everybody's schedule. Yeah. <clears throat> I see no reason for doing that at all. Okay. And the third thing that you asked for was, would we want to schedule a fall meeting? You can do this at any time you want. You don't need our permission to do that. That's a waste of time, waste of money. And since we have no money in free cash, there's no sense planning to spend money you don't have. Yep. Thank you. Doesn't cost money to plan, but yes. fine. Russell Bradbury Carlin, Stage Road. Um, I'm pretty open to whatever. Um, it's only one or two days or part of a day um, each year. I guess my question is, it might be better to pull people who aren't here. Right. Um, so, like, I, I want you to have our opinion, but really, we need to find a way to find out for the people who aren't here where yes. they come and what Agreed. would work for them. Okay. Thank you all for coming. Yes.
Yes. Annalee Wolf Cole, Mountain Road. I reflect on that town meeting that we had during COVID when we were out in the field. There were at least 400 people there, young families, had little children playing in the back of the field. Uh, we had a representative selection of residents. And I certainly hope, whether it's Saturday or Sunday, that uh, the weekend is strongly considered and, and we change to the weekend. Love, love my peers here, but we need younger representatives. Any other comments? Oh, one more. Hi, this, I'm Hannah Yaffe, uh, 5 Beaver Drive. Uh, I would just like to make a comment about accessibility. Um, I went to that outdoor um, meeting during COVID, and people with mobility issues are never going to be able to get there. Um, and also, the audio was awful. Um, couldn't hear it at all. Yeah. Um, so I think you really need to think about accessibility especially because we only give $250 to the ADA, which is the Americans with Disabilities Act. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, from the table. Hi, Julie Chop on South Mill River Road, not as a finance committee comment, but um, I, I've heard that we almost always have a fall town meeting, and the rationale behind suggesting a date for a, a sort of codified date for the fall town meeting is that so people are prepared and understand and know what's coming. Um, that way nobody will feel like, oh, this is going to be politically incorrect, but we're, we're not sneaking something by people, right? It, it's, it's there, it's known, and people can know and prepare in advance and know that it's coming. So that's the rationale behind that one. It sounds like you'll come no matter what, right? <laughs> thank you. Appreciate that. I just want to thank FCAT for uh, another great job this evening. They just do amazing yes. work. <laughs> and with that, I move the meeting adjourned to meet in the polls at the meeting room at the town offices, 8 Conway Street in the village of South Deerfield on Monday, June 8, 2000. No. no Monday. First. May 1st, 2023, uh, for the purpose of elections and at the closure of the polls to dissolve. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. We are hereby adjourned. Thank you. Thank you all very much.